Bad things, fine as hell, thick as fuck, oh my god, that's my baby, camera line. Hello everyone, what's good, what's poppin'? Welcome, welcome back to my channel, it's your girl Caroline. Welcome to the fun, riveting, exciting start to finish. Wig and style tutorial where I show you how to go from straight out of the box to giving straight out of the scalp. Okay, okay. And today, <laughs> today's a good one. Like today's a really, really good one. I feel like this one, y'all gonna like this one. Okay, today I'm gonna be basically showing you guys how I, how I create my newly found obsession, hyper realistic hairlines. I say hyper realistic hairline is giving no baby hair, just straight scalp. It could be a real hair, relaxer perm. Who knows? And I'm going to show you guys how I do that. The hair we're going to be working with today to demo how I create my custom hairlines is this wig from Ash Mary Hair Company. They sent me their 30 inch frontal wig body wave. Is it body wave? Yeah, body wave wig. She's long, she's thick. I have this in the highest density. 250% density and ooh, okay. And it's a 13 by six frontal. Let me show y'all. Ooh, this frontal, this lace is lacing. Look at that. Ah, okay. Go ahead and put it on my head just to give you guys a good reference of what we got going on. As you can see, this is the hairline that comes out of the box. It's cute. Ish. It works, but we're trying to go for custom. I'm trying to go like this is made specifically for my hairline and like it's giving realistic as I could try to make it because today a wig is still a wig. To get like a super hyper realistic look, the first thing that we need to do is bleach the knots. And what are knots for my beginners out there wondering? You see how like I'm parting the hair right now? And like it's okay, it's giving kind of scalp man because this wig was made well. But by bleaching the knots, it's gonna help like when we part the hair and stuff. It's gonna give it like, it's gonna turn these little black dots, like basically little black, these little black dots at the bottom. That's each individual knot that was tied down into the lace. And we wanna use bleaching powder to turn it from this dark color to a light color, kind of like mimicking our scalp. Cause, cause you know, like your actual hair, when you see your hair, you don't see black dots on your scalp. It just kind of disappears into your scalp. But bleaching is gonna give that effect that is disappearing into the scalp which is going to be really necessary to create this hyper-realistic look. With that said, to the salon. The salon. Hopping right into the bleaching process. To bleach your knots, you're going to need a bleaching powder. I like using this Ion Level 10 Lightning Powder. I really like this bleaching powder because, one, it is super effective at getting my dark knots because it lifts up to 10 levels of lightning. And, two, I feel like it works very fast. Like it says, flash lightning powder. So it does exactly what it says. I like using a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning I use one scoop of powder and that same one scoop of powder i'm going to go in with the same one equal amount scoop of developer that i'm using is a 40 volume developer 40 volume is the highest you can go developers and i use the highest volume because i want it to lift the most color that it can that's because the knots on this wig this wig in general is a black wig if i had like a light brown color i'd probably use like a lesser volume for my dark colored wigs i usually stick around 30 to 40 volume and sometimes also the type of bleaching powder you're using will specify different types of developer so do make sure you're reading the instructions on the back of your bleaching powders. Now here I am just adding a little bit extra. I'm adding a half a scoop of that powder because I realized it's a really big frontal. So like I said, still doing the same one to one ratio. So once I added half a scoop of more powder, I added another half a scoop equal amount of developer. The consistency is really what is key to getting a good bleach going on is that you want it to be like not too thick. But at the same time, you don't want it to be too runny. You want it to be thick enough for it to not run into the hairline. But you don't want it too thick where it just sits at the bottom of the lace. So I find literally for this bleach that a one-to-one -one equal parts works best. Here I am just going in and doing a proper mixing of everything. I like to use, most of the time I like using my mixing brush to mix my bleach. But you can use anything to mix your bleach. Just don't use any metals. No metal spoons, knives. Metal is like a catalyst and a reaction. And it's going to kind of 
affect how efficient your bleaching powder works. Once I have the bleach mixed to my liking, I'm going to ahead and just make sure that it's the right consistency and not too runny because a runny bleach is going to ruin everything that we've just worked on right here. So I always like to do a little flip over test. I like to make sure I can flip it over and it's not going to drip. I like to make sure that it's nice and smooth and creamy and not dry, chalky, and draggy. Now that I have my bleach mixed to my desire, I'm going ahead and just getting the hair itself prepped for the bleaching. Only prep I really do is I just like to spray the hairline with some hairspray just to kind of help me push the hair all the way back. It doesn't prevent the bleach from bleeding into the hair. It just helps me be able to push the hair back and out of the way and make sure I have the root standing upwards. I don't want the hair to be laying into the lace because that's how I'm going to mistakenly get bleach on it. So try to make sure you're pushing the hair upwards, not like back more into the lace if that makes any types of sense now i'm going ahead and just flipping the wig inside out and making sure the hair again is upwards and out of the lace so that way my put bleach is not applying and seeping into the hair i feel like another thing too with bleaching it's all all about being aware of where the hair and the lace is so i just like to make sure i have everything properly prepped out and now it's time to go ahead and apply the bleach i like applying the bleach starting from the back of the wig because i feel like the back the knots in the back are usually thicker kind of like when you're adding a relaxer and they tell you to add the relaxer from the back because the back needs more processing time before you get to the front same concept kind of so i go in from the back using a popsicle stick i like using a popsicle stick because i can mimic the action of buttering toast because you also want to get the right amount of pressure when applying the bleach it's kind of like a balancing act with the pressure you want to apply enough pressure for the bleach to not just sit at the bottom of the lace because remember we are really trying to cover those knots that we saw on the top of the lace earlier but we need to apply enough pressure for it to really cover those top knots but not too much where it's now bleeding into the hair itself so i feel like using a popsicle stick get, helps me control the pressure a lot better than just going in with the mixing brush the mixing brush i feel like applies too much too fast and you have no control one thing i've realized now that i've been doing bleaching so much is i have also have to make sure that i'm doing my best to apply the bleach as fast as i can because if i take too much time on the back and barely enough time on the front even though the back needs more processing time by the time the back is done, the front is sometimes hardly ever done. So make sure you're also working in a timely manner to give everything enough time to process and lighten to an even color. Once I get to the front, I usually can use a little bit less pressure because the knots in the front most of the time are a lot smaller. So they don't need as much bleach to really saturate to get to the other side. So I use a lighter hand on the front and once I've completely, completely covered up the knots on the lace, I like to turn it back over and just start to part through the hair and check if the bleach has actually seeped through and covered the knots on the top so whenever i part through the hair if i can still see like the little black dots on top and it's not covered up by the bleach that's how i know i need to go back in and apply a little bit more pressure this is when i feel confident to get just a little bit of bleach on my mixing brush and i go in that small amount of bleach right there and i just go in and push that bleach more so it can really cover those knots on the top side because if you just have it sitting at the bottom of the lace it's not going to look like you actually bleached the knots because only the bottom of those knots got bleached you want it to seep through to cover the top that is a, a tip I learned recently that really changed my bleaching game to make it look like I actually did something. This is another reason why it's important to have a good bleach consistency because if it's too runny, this pushing nonsense we're doing will ruin the wig. It's going to push itself and start to bleed into the hairline. Since I have a good consistency, I don't fear it running because it's not going to run anywhere because it's mixed to tea. Now I'm just going in and just checking one more time to make sure my knots are fully covered up and they are. And it's time to wrap it up with foil and let it process. I like going in with bleach to cover the underside of my lace and a little bit of the top because I feel like one, the foil helps trap in the heat which is going to help the hair process a lot faster and more evenly and two I found using foil helps prevent the bleach from drying out because once the bleach dries out it's no longer active and working so keeping it with the foil is going to help it like stay nice and moisturized and effective through the whole how long ever I need the bleach to stay on the wig I say how long ever because bleaching time really varies with a lot of different factors what kind of hair it is how much is in process so I never give a specific bleaching time I always say 30 to 40 work in 10 to 15 minute intervals so basically i will just leave a 15 minute timer and keep checking every 15 minutes so i see the bleach has lifted the knots to the desired color i always feel like nothing over an hour though over an hour especially with 40 bomb developer is really going to be damaging to the knots if it's been an hour your knots have not lifted to the color you needed don't be shy to wash it out and just do the process again the reason why bleaching time varies is because what 
not color you're going for it really varies on your skin tone so for me i'm on the lighter side so i like my knots to process to around a level seven or eight on the chart like a yellowish blonde color but if you're like on the darker side deeper tones you might probably want to do like a like a level seven to a level six you just have to let it process to what your scalp color looks if your scalp is not that light then you know you don't have to have the process for that long the longer it processes the lighter it's going to get never let it get to a level 10 because that's just intensely light and never never ever leave your bleach on overnight because it's going to literally melt the hairs off right off the lace it's about an hour later when i finally washed the knots out because i like to let my knots process to a lighter color so it can take a longer time so it took about an hour for it to fully go through and here i am just making sure i'm washing everything out thoroughly and now that the knots are washed and the, it's been bleached you can see that it has a bit of a orangey orange brassy tone to it which is complete whenever you're going from that dark to that blonde color there's a lot of like undertones and color waves that you're going to pass through so you're going to have to go in with some toner to help just correct it to be a more neutral color because my scalp is not orange it's not yellow i don't know about you but it's a very neutral brown so i like to go in with a combination of purple and blue shampoo to tone my knots i like using purple and blue because it's going to cancel out both potential orange and yellow undertones i do a little squirt of the orange i'm sorry a little squirt of the blue and a little squirt of the purple to get like an even color of both and i go in with my mixing brush and apply this directly to the knots i like doing this routine versus the way i use versus the old way where i would like just drench the lace with the shampoos and scrub it in i feel like this way i'm making sure i'm getting the color exactly on those knots so i've properly saturated the lace with the toning pigments i let it sit for about no more than 10 minutes because i always fear that the that the pigments is going to somehow stain the lace because some laces don't take too well to this some don't stain some will so i feel like 10 minutes is like the soft spot the sweet spot or however you call it i let it sit for 10 minutes and i come back and wash it out and voila i don't know if y'all remember the before but here's the before action and here's the after it is a lot more neutralized and giving scalp basically it for our not bleaching and toning process real quick i'm going in with some conditioner just to help co-wash the hair i like to co-wash all my hair i feel like it just like adds moisture because the hair usually comes kind of dry from the company so i like to let it sit in conditioner for a good minute and wash it out and I let my hair air dry always <clears throat> we're back since we last bleached the knots here's how the bleached knots are looking and already it's giving much more scalp next thing is to pluck it's a couple days later because i've been really dragging my feet honestly when it comes to doing this wig like i've literally installed other wigs and i left this wig in the dust that is because this customization we're doing this is like making a custom hairline so it just takes a lot more work it's a bit more tedious you really have to be more focused and more intentional with a lot of things and uh, sometimes yeah so but it's well worth it once you get to the end and plus i know the plucking parts apart i'm really dreading because it's a 6 by 13 so it's a lot bigger and second i'm realizing i'm realizing this is more of a voiceover than like a regular you know my walk through where i talk through them and walk you through them in real time i feel like the voiceover is going to help me explain a lot better and let me focus a lot better so yeah with that said let's pluck this hairline up Take it from here, voiceover Caroline. Speak to the people. Hey girl, hey, missed me? <laughs> okay, back to the voiceover. So the first thing I like to do before I even think about putting the wig onto the mannequin head is I like to put it on my head first and find where the middle lies on my head because I realized the middle on the mannequin head isn't always the middle on my head because different head shapes, I guess. So I like to just get a rough draft middle part going and I use a little brown eyeliner pencil to mark on the lace where the middle is so now when i put it back onto my mannequin i can line up that middle marking with the middle line on the head and then of course i go ahead and just pin down the lace to make sure the lace is being pulled out nice and taut no wrinkles no fold you want the lace to be pulled out secure them down or secure the lace down with t-pins you can get t-pins from the beauty supply store amazon or even the sewing section now i'm going in and tracing that little middle part that i have lined up on the middle part line on the canvas head i'm just going in and tracing out a cleaner middle part the middle for plucking is really important because even if you're not going to style the hair in the middle you want to know where the middle is because you want to make sure you are not plucking directly on the middle once i have the hair parted out in the middle i'm going in with my very hot hot comb and i'm taking my time to really press out the roots press everything 
upwards and back. Pressing out the roots is a very important part of plucking because you want to be able to see the actual hairline. So I really make sure I'm taking my time to push all the hair upwards and back so I can really see what I'm working with, which is also why it's important to have your hot comb on the highest degree because that's what's going to help you really press and melt through the hair. To pluck, I like using this Revlon Diamond Slant Tips tweezer. This is a men's series. This is the only tweezer I find that helps me pull out my knots from the root, but at the same time isn't too sharp where it's poking holes. Because the type of tweezer you use does make a big difference. Some tweezers can be too dull and some tweezers are actually too sharp. Now let's get into the actual plucking. So I want to show you guys something real quick. You see how like the front of the hairline, It's this is a pre-plucked wig, so it's a great example. You see how the front of the hairline has a little bit of like striations, lines, has some gappage going through in the front right there. That is what we want to recreate, but this time deeper back into the hairline, especially for this hyper-realistic look we're going for. I've realized for it to look really plucked, it's not about plucking the front a lot. It's really about plucking deeper back into the hairline. So I want to recreate this vibe, but in the back. So now I'm going ahead and just plucking out that pre-plucked section. Even if your wig doesn't come pre-plucked, still never start plucking in the front of the hairline. You see how this back portion doesn't have those gappages and thinned out lines the way the front did? That's because this portion is not the plucked area. We want to thin it out and pluck it to resemble how it was looking in the front. Just to kind of give you guys a visual of what you're going for whenever you do pluck. I'm going in my hot comb real quick just to like take care of the flyaways and push everything out of the way because when you're plucking you want to have a clean workspace meaning the hair is still pushed back. Everything is pressed back because whenever there's hairs here and there all over the place it's not going to give a clean plucked look. Now that I'm ready to pluck, I have to also keep two things in mind. One, do not pluck right in that middle part because it just makes the middle part look weird and strange. And two, do not part, do not pluck right on the parted space right here. Plucking right on that space is going to create bald spots and gappages and it's just going to make the hair look weird once you comb it backwards. Make sure you start above that parted area right there. And I also make sure I start right before the middle part now that i've got everything pushed and pressed back i can go ahead and start plucking and for my plucking i do a back dragging motion so i'm not pulling upwards i'm dragging my tweezer backwards and i make sure that i'm pulling those knots out from the roots when i say the root i mean those knots pull out the knots do not just like leave little tiny black dots behind or blonde dots because we bleach the hair if you're leaving little dots behind then you're not pulling enough or your tweezer is not strong enough you're not bringing your tweezer close enough to the root to be pulling it out from the root when i pluck i kind of do like a pluck skip method so like i pluck one line skip the next line like i'm just creating little striations and gaps in between each little line of hair to give that thinned out hairline effect i also try to make sure i'm not plucking in the same space so i pluck skip pluck skip and if it looks like i'm plucking the same area i'm really not i'm probably just taking my tweezer further back into the hairline it works best to try to work in sections like do a little corner like first i like to split the hair in half right and then i split that half into another half so here i'm just plucking this half of the half and then I work my way back and I'm taking my tweezer further backwards into that hair. For this hyper realistic hairline look you really want to focus a lot on really plucking further back into the hairline versus how well the front is plucked because well at least for me my hairline is quite thinned out naturally my real hairline is a little bit thinned out more so I feel like I to get that really like hyper realistic look to me I really have to take my time and pluck a lot further back into the hairline and given this is a six by this is a 13 by six frontal it has a lot more lace I gotta really go back deeper into there. Sometimes you're able to reach those further back knots by just, you know, having the hair parted out like this, but sometimes it's really hard to get those knots without creating a ball spot because you can't really tell if you're plucking the same knots in the front or if you're actually plucking those knots in the back. So I'll just go ahead and 
part out some more hair and do the same thing and really go ham and start plucking further into the back you don't have to pluck all the way to the back of the lace you just have to pluck about i say a good two to three inches deep if you really want to get that hyper realistic look verbally i feel like that's really all i can really say to explain plucking i feel like it's more of a visual process so i'm just gonna ahead, go ahead and leave these clips of me plucking the rest of this side of the hairline and come back when it's necessary to speak Once I finished plucking through the whole hairline on that side, plucking the back of the hairline, I go ahead and just start brushing everything back to the front. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it doesn't really look like I did a lot of plucking, which is why I really like this plucking behind the hairline method because you can go as crazy as you want as long as you don't pluck in the parting space right there. You can go as crazy as you want and once you push that front hairline back, it still doesn't look over plucked and you still have control on how how plucked you want the hairline to look because you can realistically stop right here and have a really good natural looking install but like I said we're going for hyper realistic and my hairline she's thinned out so now because I want to really go for a more plucked look I can go ahead and pluck the front to really like create windows and gaps in the hair which is going to help show that really plucked out back section but still with the front I don't go as ham as I did in the back because I like to really just like be gentle when plucking with the front because when you pluck too much of the front it's the whole hair just looks over plucked and you can't go back and since I know that I'm going to do more plucking later on during the install because you can't really tell how plucked it is until you have it installed onto your head I just do a light plucking in the front just a little pluck skip pluck skip here and there if anything I'm still going more back into the back of the hairline to get it look more thinned out but I just do a little light plucking in the front just enough to get that look that I'm going for and then I save the extra really making it perfect to my hairline later during the install And we are done plucking okay well for now y'all see that not gonna lie my plucking game <laughs> is me in. like I feel like I've really been working on mastering a lot of my techniques last year I feel like last year was like lots of like technique mastering um, bleaching plucking and now it starts to really eat okay like so we've done the plucking, we've done the bleaching, it's looking a lot more realistic. It's looking a lot more realistic, but it's not yet exactly custom to our heads. We get the whole custom part upon the installation. Okay, so 
let's get into finally installing her first thing we have to do is tint the lace i think this is like i'm not sure if it's hd or transparent lace it kind of looks transparent but i'm going to put the specs down below tinting the lace with my foundation like i always say make sure the foundation matches your forehead this is my this is like my perfect forehead shade oh actually never mind i lied i forgot it's winter i've gone a little bit lighter so this actually is my perfect forehead shade and this is the born this way butter pecan born this way in butter pecan you want a shade that matches your forehead exactly because that's where the lace is going to be laying i like to just go in and buff that in underneath nice nice This is a whole lot of frontal, a whole lot of lace. Dang, I just realized there's no clips or nothing in this wig. Ash, Mary, I love y'all, but damn, no clips. It's just an elastic band. Whew. <laughs> and then we slide her on. Like so. <clears throat> Look at all this parting space. Like, a side part would low key really eat with this. But that's not what we're here for today. I want to do a middle part. Now we can make it more custom. This is the custom part. Fit up on your head. And you want the wig to sit basically far down on your head. Like, even like if this, the lace all the way here is like coming too far down. You want it to fit as far down as it can to cover up all your baby hairs. So if like my low sideburn people, if your sideburns come down like all the way down here, pull it down to the place where your sideburns come down. Even if it's too low in the front, that's okay. That's the whole part of getting it custom. Now what we're gonna do is get it to fit our ears customly, our head shape. It's tracing around where my ears, first I look just like poke poke the top of my ear to find where the top of my ear is and I just like trace around that shape this is the hair this way got a whole lot of lace and then we just go ahead and cut what we just parted out we'll try our best to cut out oh, I don't Ooh. I just cut the top of my ear Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm cutting so much hair, I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Yeah, some clips would be nice on this wig, not gonna lie to you. Same thing on the other side. Okay, show the fit around your ears perfectly, like so. Now we create the custom hairline. I like to lift it back up to see where like my actual hairline is. And like my hair comes on really low, like down here on the sides, you can see, but it like it goes back higher up here, around right here. So you gotta study your own natural hairline to know. So like I was saying, my hairline comes down down on the sides around here, but it doesn't come down that low in the front. So what I like to do is just pull out the hairs in the front that don't match my natural hairline. Even these on the side low key come down a little bit, but I'm gonna take care of those later. I like to do the front piece first. Even down here comes down a little too low. You don't wanna pull out too much, like just pluck out a little bit. Like that's pretty good for me. Like I gotta do a little bit at first, like pull out a little bit and then pull out more when I need to tweak it to match my hair. And what I have to do is just like kind of draw like a curved C so I can get like that widow part, widow peak effect. I do have like a little bit of a widow's peak in the front of my hair. Oof, that's too much. And then now what you do is you pluck them, you pull them out. When you pull them out, you gotta be really careful. You have to pull them out versus plucking them out because plucking it out was gonna like you have to pull them out versus cutting because you can like cut out this shape right here if you wanted to 
get the, but it wouldn't give the same like effect on the hairline because cutting it is gonna like leave little knots behind that's just gonna, like give like a messy look plucking it or pulling it out or you can nair it out is gonna help take the hair out right out from the root which is gonna like leave like a clean lace look but the thing with pulling it out is like you might rip your lace so you want to make sure you have like a lace that like the knots if the knots are easily like if you were plucking in you and you realize when you're plucking those knots from coming out easily don't do it with this use nair instead but if they're like little small knots like these that come out really easily then you can pull it and before i pull it to like apply tension like i pull back on the lace to apply tension like how you when you're waxing and then ooh, i pull it out even these are a bit hard to pull out see you're up nice and clean like that Mm-hmm. And that is my custom little hairline. Now the sides here, I'm gonna pull out these pieces just a little bit because my hairline on the side doesn't come out that far. So I'm just gonna pull the little pieces down here that come down just a bit too far on my sides, just a little bit. Okay. Now we proceed to lay. If you have like really low sideburns, you might have to pull out a lot more than I do. My sideburns aren't that low, so I don't have to like, they don't come down too far. But do make sure you're cutting in an up and down jagged motion. Because you want the lace to like lay as seeming seamlessly as possible. Go on with that ebon lace spray and spring I realized I had to pull out a little bit of hair right here. It came down a little bit too low. When you pull out, make sure you cut off excess lace. You gotta cut off as much excess lace as possible. Like, don't leave any like blank space of lace. The less lace, the better. Like, don't be saving that lace. Okay, almost done. Now we gotta do even more plucking to make it look very like real hair like like okay but plucking when i say more plucking we're plucking more behind the hairline that's why when i was saying earlier when we pluck don't fuck don't you have to get it too perfect in the beginning because we're gonna end up pulling out those hairs anyways and now that i pull out all the hair i need to pull out i can confidently go back into the hairline like further black now we're going to do some plucking further back into the hairline because you see this like that's cute that's okay that works but i'm trying to give like 
my hair and i don't know about y'all but i have a pretty plucked out hairline i feel like the more plucked it looks more realistic it looks so you're like that means you're balding okay let me be balding anyway i'm just gonna part down the middle again so i know where the middle is and same thing as before pluck out that front line but i'm gonna pluck like a little bit more of that like pluck a little bit deeper in i need the plucking to go a lot further back I'm gonna pluck out, pull out a lot more hair than before. Same thing, remember not to pluck on that line we just parted, but to pluck in the back and go deeper backwards, avoiding puckling right on the part. We just want the to thin out the back of the hairline some more. Pluck this all back to the front. You see that? I don't know if you can see, but it's looking a lot more natural. Same thing right here. I'm gonna put, I like to push everything back to the front. And then not starting in the front, but just like in the back, pluck little gaps that I can see. Or just like pluck where I feel like it needs to be densed out a little bit more. But still not plucking right on the front because I don't want to start creating bald spots. I'm just trying to create striations and gap edges. You sit down. That's scalp. Okay. Same thing on this side now. Okay, let's see what we're looking like. Hopefully, I haven't cut myself a bald patch. Oh, it's giving. Okay, period. It's giving relaxer, yes. But now that I have the band off, I can see like a little bit more in the front than needed. Just a bit more plucking right here. This is not a style you want to do with your everyday wig, okay? Because a lot of plucking, as cute as it looks, it can cause like it, it can cause like shedding like your wig to look bald over time, especially like a wig that you wear heavily. Eventually, because you know you're taking out all the hairs in the front, because wigs through time do will start to shed and fall. So eventually. With wear, since it's like this is already like very plucked, it will look more bald than your average wig. 
so do not do this with your everyday wig or a wig that you know is not that sturdy now since it's like a no baby hair look we're not gonna add baby hairs but what we are gonna do what we are gonna do is like swoop the hairline in a way that like just looks really natural and clean i'm using this um what's it called lace melt mousse from ebon lace spray it also like helps like melt your lace but at the same time it's a mousse i like using my baby hairs and that's so what i'm gonna do is just like literally just like clean up the hairline swoop it like i like to like like the sides instead of having it just go up and down like how it is right now i just like to like swoop it a little bit i do like adding little sideburns on the side of mine it's like the really only baby hair i do i do this style it's just like a little sideburn action uh, i just feel like it just looks better We'll have our preferences, that's mine. You guys that? Like what? Tell me that's not my hair. You can't. Exactly. <laughs> Versus this. Same thing on this side. Okay, and this is what we are working with. I feel like I should go in a bit more on this side. You see how like this is like really giving straight, like plucked and scalped. I think like right here needs a little bit more. So I'm just not from the front, again, in between. I feel like I gotta part it out a bit. I'm scared to start plucking too much in the front. I don't wanna pluck. The front you see that see how thick it is back here yeah gonna go in and pluck some more just to make it even so we can give on both sides Now what we're gonna do rest is just the styling. I'm gonna keep the styling. Now let's get into styling. Styling, I just wanna do some loose curls, this hair. It's super long. Let me see if I can show y'all. This hair is 30 inches. It's thick and long. I'm basically just doing curls going inward and outward. I just want like a messy blowout type of look. So you gotta do the curls in both directions. And this is my one and a half inch hot chills curling iron. I love it because I can fit big chunks of hair in it. I can't even see what's going on back there. I hope it makes sense. Oh, 
my hand is aching. Almost there. Now to just clean everything up, I'm going in with wax on the top just to clean it up. But like, come on, this is giving a sew-in. Like, excuse me. Like, do not play with it. Okay, now I just want to go in and clean up everything properly. So, first of all, make the middle part a little more straighter. It's a bit crooked. And then I go in with like a light colored concealer something that i basically would use like under my eyes well not unless you use like a really bright but something at least one to two shades lighter than you and i'm gonna pop that as straight as possible right in the part i like to overdraw mine a little bit down to my actual forehead some people don't like it i do it's just to look i like make sure you blend it out so it's not thick and chalky and then i go in with some black mascara black eyeshadow any black dark makeup or whatever hair color makeup you can find the eyeshadow palette works great too and i'm just gonna fill in all the little gaps basically make the part nice and straight and even and if you have like any bald spots and over plucking just fill those in a little bit too all right let me use hairspray to clean it up I just want like a very messy blowout type of look. Like I don't, I don't want it too neat. I feel like this hairstyle, my forehead shows a lot more because it's like custom to my head, so you get real natural forehead in this look. But it still eats. Like it just still eats. You don't have to make it as low as I did, but I just wanted to really mimic my natural hairline. But yeah, get into it, baby. Get into it. Let me back up so y'all can see the hair in its full glory. Part, it's really the hairline that is the star of the show. Like, what? Come on. Like, <laughs> it's too good. Like, this is hyper realistic like this is so realistic like the only way i'm okay wearing baby hairs is like doing it like this because like, i feel like doing no baby hairs when like the hairline is not as like plucked out sometimes it just gives wiggy obviously like you're gonna do no baby hairs you gotta do like this like ah! came out so good i'm so happy all right so that's done call it a day made it to the end i love that for us see you guys in another one make sure you like comment and subscribe and if you try this out just let me know because i'm sure you're gonna love it and i'll see you guys in another one peace out girl scouts goodbye